Now, it just wouldn't be right to have an Egyptian-themed escape room without a sarcophagus that you can open, get stuff out of, or even yet go inside, uh, which is what we're doing. You can get full-on sarcophagi, I think that's the plural, pre-made from uh, various suppliers that, that sell that kind of tchotchke. However, they're usually uh, sold as bookcases or maybe uh, like liquor cabinets, and they're just not big enough to actually get an adult human through uh, into whatever may lie beyond it. So we are having to make our own uh, sarcophagus that will function as a door, uh, which will contain more undisclosed fabulous prizes. <laughs> Uh, so we have, and we've done some modifications on our, uh, our head here uh, because there's no reason to totally reinvent the wheel. Uh, so we have our, our modified Faro head, and then based on the scale of this one, I have in, um, in CAD made a model of what our rough sarcophagus is going to look like. So it's going to be built up out of layers MDF and then carved down. Uh, but because this thing is so thick, building it out of straight MDF, I calculated it was going to take about 14 sheets at about 100 pounds a sheet, which makes it a very, very heavy door that may as well be stone. Uh, so we're not doing that. So I have already done all my math on in the computer and on the CNC, and I've cut out like 16 of these. So that'll give us eight layers uh, worth of MDF that are gonna, so we'll glue, nail, and build up, and just keep on building this up. And that'll get us our six and three quarter inches, which is about how big our, um, uh, our pharaoh head is. So that'll be the front, and then once we get this done, I will show you what we're going to do to do the arm cross uh, for that, because that's pretty iconic of the sarcophagus is, is this. I think it's mostly because of, of Tut. That's kind of the one that we all know. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to make some shit. Tall, which is what we're going for, so I like it. Uh, this is, I may not go with this, or I may modify this somewhat heavily for uh, his uh, arm cross from the hands. I'm just gonna, we're gonna clamp it in place to get a feel for what it should be doing. So, Anna, if you would do the honors there. Uh, yeah, so that was about. Let me increase the angle back up. Okay, this is coming along. This was the original kind of hand thing. And uh, the idea was this was gonna look like sleeves or something, but that was kind of like old European wizard sleeves on a sarcophagus, and it, it didn't look good. Uh, so I threw this away, it's garbage. And uh, we made this one that looks more like arms, and it have that piece over there. So there he is crossing his arms, and we have our mannequin hands that will go in here, and they will be set at the proper angle. Cover plate goes on there. And then he'll be holding his, uh, his onk and his crook uh, in those hands. So the next thing we have to do is modify the hands so they can actually hold this one inch dowel. Uh, which means we get to go cut thumbs off on the bandsaw, just like I've never wanted to do. Now, if you want to cut off a thumb, the bandsaw is the tool to use. If you don't want to cut off a thumb, the bandsaw is probably still the tool to use. So um, I'm really just kind of winging this. So we got a one inch dowel, got to be able to hold that. So we're just going to remove the thumb, and that's going to be just kind of part of what's behind the casting. Because if you look at the actual Tutankhamun sarcophagus that this is mostly roughly based on, you don't really see thumbs. You just see the front of his hands, and it's all actually pretty flat. So I think if I just cut off the flum, thumb flat, that will be what we want to do. I'm going to keep my own thumbs well shy, and uh... oh, God. 
Ah, my thumb! Yeah! And if you are so inclined, your own thumbs can come off just that easily. Huh? It'll be shorter and recessed down into there. But, uh, yeah. I'm going to angle these a little bit, so... Uh, so now I just need to cut off his other thumb, and then we're going to rotate the wrists so that the, uh, his sticks are on different... that way, yeah. Different angles, so that one of these can be removed. And uh, so, more thumb cutty, and then we are going to start securing stuff, I think. Well, the, uh, his uh, flail and crook, uh, which may or may not be game elements, are actually packed up so that I can't show you that with this. But uh, we did this in, uh, I used our special secret stone mixture to, uh, to paint the body. He is close to eight feet tall uh, and pretty nice looking. Um, weighs about, uh, about 200 pounds at this point. Um, we, uh, we added this little accent panel right here uh, with curse inscribed uh, because um, uh, it just it felt a little bit plain below the waist, uh, so we added that element. Uh, the biggest thing, uh, we, were, we were looking at the transition between the, the gold mask and the rest of the sarcophagus, and uh, we, came, we stole this from the movie Stargate. Uh, the armor and a lot of the, uh, the costuming elements from the movie Stargate uh, to give us this, uh, th these shoulder bells uh, that, that uh, sort of make the thing transition all together and, and beautiful and stuff like that. So we're pretty damn happy with this guy right now. One of the important elements w with this guy is that the, the, the flail and crook are removable. Uh, and so, you know, anytime you have a lever, then you're looking at something that can potentially either damage the lever itself, depending on how the lever's made, or uh, would damage the piece. So having, uh, having a really tough interface between those pieces is very important in this sort of an application. I don't know if that's a little too in the weeds, but there it is. So there are some mechanical concerns with this guy that we then addressed. And, uh, and, well, he's ready to ship, so good enough. You will see later on that we mount a wheel under this guy because he moves. And, uh, and so we will uh, we'll show you that in the installation video. Stay tuned, we have a lot more videos uh, in the pipe right now, so you, we got some stuff to show you. And thanks for watching to the end. You're a, you're a cool person and very attractive. <laughs>